All right, guys, in this video, <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to be, you know, I don't know if I'm going to upload this part and then wait and do the other part, <sighs> but I'm installing a system in the RAM. So I got four gauge ample iron kit, uh, full tilt audio and purple. I got some custom purple RCA cables, which they're going to be entirely too long. Um, I might end up ordering a second set smaller at a later date. T harness. There's the radio T harness. And then here's some plugs, which go to my level out converter. Wave Tech. This is from LLJ Audio. They make T harnesses for a bunch of stuff. And then my Memphis Audio. Uh, 1201 street reference imp 1200 at 1 ohm which is what I'm going to wire my subs at <clears throat> it's a nice amp and it's Memphis audio so it's good quality and as far as subwoofers I ordered a uh, extreme enclosures box which is still being manufactured I ordered that a couple weeks ago but it was on a 10 week wait and then I ordered two MR uh, or MB 12 inch uh, subs, so the M series 12 inch subs that are both 2 ohm and 4 ohm. Um, I'm either going to upload this just with this and then do the sub box next, or I'm going to wait. But anyway, I'm going to show you where I'm going to mount the amp. So, move the seat all the way forward. My amp is going to go right here. Seems like the common place on these Dodges is to put the sub or put the amp right back here and then put the speaker wires down the panel, uh, kick panel to the sub box underneath. All right, well, my original plan uh, didn't work out on running the sub wire. Uh, do not go through that grommet. I tried to go through the grommet on the back side, and I don't know if you can see. But that thing is full of wires. <clears throat> I thought it was like my other couple vehicles that uh, I've ran stuff through there and it's relatively void inside that. Uh, the wires usually go straight through and they're kind of bundled together. Uh, no, not in that. In that one, it's wires all over the place. Luckily, I hadn't changed the blade on my knife. Because my knife has a replaceable blade. It's basically a razor knife. Um, luckily I hadn't replaced the blade. It's replaced now because I needed to cut the hole open enough where I could see if I cut any wires. But I only made like a small incision. I nicked a couple of the wires. But I don't think it's all the way through. I've spent like 30, minute, 30 to 45 minutes meticulously cutting that out. Uh, to try to see <clears throat> if I messed up any of the wires. And it doesn't look like it. So instead, the clutch hole right here, I already had a small uh, half inch hole drilled so I could get my uh, aux switch wires through where I went and took it out and I took a Dremel and Dremeled the entire circle out. Now, in hindsight, that is honestly too much. I can fit a, a zero gauge wire through that now. Pull this out, which there's two 15 millimeters on the back side, pull it out and drill a hole big enough for your amp wire to go through and use that. So now I am going to go ahead and set up where I want to put my fuse box and all that stuff. Probably going to connect it right here, this main wire right here. Probably going to loop it around here, come through the front side and put the fuse panel right here little fuse holder either right here or right here somewhere over here close I might actually put it up here and then run it around here run it down into the hole all right some time has passed and I finally figured out how to mount the power wire basically the only place you can put it is right here on this stud you can put them on these smaller studs but then you won't get full battery power plus this is going to be fused anyway the last thing you want to do is, if your amp blows, is to not have this fuse blow, but have one of these two fuses blow. Because that means 
that's part of your vehicle. Something on your vehicle is not going to work if one of these two fuses blow. So, I had to put it here. I was hoping I could flip it over and put it at the bottom, but this whole thing is sunk down on the bottom and on the top, so you can't put this on the bottom. It would have been so much easier. So, I got that down, got it tight, shaved this off some more, and there. Now, I got that mounted, the fuse uh, block mounted. Now I've cut the wire, I've measured the length, and I've cut it and put a ferrule on it and then tighten that Allen screw and now it's, you know, it's all crushed down, it's not going anywhere. If you, you don't have to use a ferrule, you can just stuff the wire in there and tighten it down, but the you start splitting wire, cutting wire, smashing wire, Plus, if you ever have to take this out and change the fuse block or something and you need to put it back in, well, you know, you got wires cut. You might have to cut it and do anything else. So I put a ferrule on there so you can just literally take it out and put it back in when you need to. So I got a four gauge fer ferrule in there. Got that tight. I'm going to get some heat shrink and put some heat shrink right here. Okay, so you basically take the ferrule, put it where it's at the end, and then like scribe a mark like I did right there. And then take a knife, put one slit down, and go all the way around it. All right, I got that cut. The ferrule is here. Now, this is either a little oversized, a four gauge, or this is a little undersized. But basically, you take the ferrule, and you get all your wires in, and try to stuff it in there without having any stray wires. The Another main benefit of a ferrule is that you get all these wires in the one piece so you don't have any scraggly wires hanging out on the outside of the amp where it could bridge to another piece. And there's the ferrule and I already took the uh, set screw out of it and the uh, uh, there's a a reducer inside here for like 8 gauge or 6 gauge. I went ahead and took that out also. And then you just slip this in here and tighten it down as tight as you can. And there's the other side. All nice, tight, crimped down, not going anywhere. Now, like I said, I'm going to get some heat shrink, just a some small, th small thing of heat shrink, just as a, a strain relief right here. Alright, have the positive cable disconnected because uh, I don't have the... Uh, Speakers yet, so there's no sense in having the power wire hooked up. Go goes around here. I'll tidy all this up when I actually connect it and zip tie everything together. There's the fuse block, which I'm going to change out. I really don't like it. I left me some extra slack down here in case I got to cut the wire. Ran it behind this uh, bracket right here, through here. Zip tied it there. Went it down through there, and went through the. Uh, clutch plate, block off plate in the firewall. Alright, there's the power wire coming through there. Have it ran behind all of this stuff over here. See it ran behind the harnesses. I have it ran behind this uh, harness tray right there. And then I have it ran butted up on the bottom side and then along the e-brake cable, have it zipped out a couple places, have it pulled the carpet up, ran it along the wiring tray over here, and then it continues under here, and then it curves up somewhere right here, and then I routed it through the wire uh, opening right there. So now, Put my T harness in with my low level converter, but uh, I guess it's a cardinal sin in audio. Uh, the only way to get the RCA to here is to run it over and run it along the power wire. Now that's something you should never do, but in this case, the only other thing I can do is take the seat out and try to fish the wires underneath the carpet in the center. But I'm not gonna go through all that effort. 
to take the seat out just to run the RCAs right here. So uh, I'm going to, I think my low level converter is going to mount somewhere up under the dash over here. And then I'm just going to run it over everything, over to here, run it down next to the e-brake, run it over to here, and then run it over. And then going to come out up here. Take the two T15s out of here, then this just pulls out. And then there's four seven millimeters around the corner. And the radio pulls back. And right there, that is what that T-harness connects to. So I'll go ahead and get that. All right, got the T-harness in from there to there. Have all my wires ran up here and plugged into the respective spots. You see, I got it going through there. I have it back there. And I have it ran up here. Basically, I just push it up through there through there into there and just kept on pushing until I could push it uh, pull it through up here and pulled it through these uh, latches are a little help uh, the factory latch was uh, kind of messed up it didn't really want to completely go in all the time uh, that the aftermarket one went in perfectly but uh, yeah so I got all this done I'm gonna put the radio back and I'm actually gonna set my uh, uh, LOC, um, I am going to, I got a little, uh, a voltmeter, but it also ha has, uh, a, uh, scope on it, and I should at least be able to figure out where my factory amplifier, where my factory head unit starts cutting off. Um, I'm gonna take that so I can figure out how much I can turn my radio up. And then once I figure out where my radio is clipping, then I'm going to go ahead and set this until this starts clipping. This actually has a clip light on it. The clip light right over there. So I should be able to set it uh, till it you know gets done clipping. And uh, and I'm also going to check it with 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 my scope. All right. So this is my multimeter with a scope. I'm probing the speaker outputs to figure out when the radio clips and also figuring out how many volts this takes because there's a jumper inside of WaveTech that you can jumper between 2 and 20 volts and 4 and 40 volts. Well, this only, I guess this factory head unit only does uh, 20 volts max maybe. But, uh, uh, so uh, when this thing, when this radio clips, if I have the base in the center, which is what you want, the base in the center with the 40 volt test tone, the radio clips at like 36, 37, 37 is a hard clip. 36 is it kind of clips back and forth so 34 and 35 is about as much as I can turn this radio up without it clipping through the output <clears throat> you don't want clipping to go to your subs because that clipping goes to the amp and then the amp amplifies the clipping which will blow a sub so uh, I don't have enough hands to show you but uh, there's a waveform nice and good the voltage is like 4 or 5 so, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it, but it does say it's 40 hertz right here. So, I'm going to get it up to where it clips, and I'll show you. That flat line you saw was clipping. That's not what you want. 34 is probably the most I want to target it up. 34, and then I'm going to turn this gain up until this starts clipping, and then I'm going to turn it down. Basically, you want to find where your radio clips with your base in the center. With your base in the center. Uh, when I had the base turned up, it was clipping way down at like 25, 26. All right, I got it all set up. Got the output set up. I got it set at around five and a half volts coming out before it clips. So uh, yeah, now I'm going to take that, put it up and mount it. It's starting to rain, so I need to push this in the garage.
or drive it in the garage and I'll finish setting it up in the garage. Alright, I got the LOC mounted on top of this uh, floor vent. I was going to mount it to that wire, or to that dash bracket right there, but it rattled around. It wouldn't stay solid. So, got the remote wire and the RCA wire ran up, over, and then down right there. And then it follows the same route as the power wire, which is behind all this stuff, behind this bracket, and down next to the e-brake cable. So I'm just gonna run all this down here, stuff it up under the under there. All right, well, it's been a number of weeks, and I finally got my box in with the seat uh, risers and stuff. These are my subs. I don't know if I showed these before. And uh, these barely fit. This is the Extreme Enclosures Deep box for the RAM that fits in these cubby holes. And then you have your uh, bolts where you raise the seat up with these spacers. I kind of wish these were one piece spacers, but these are spacers nonetheless. If I want to get one piece, I can order the one piece later. This box has this, I guess this is fiberglass, or it's either fiberglass or molded plastic, ABS plastic, which actually it looks more like ABS plastic, that does not feel like fiberglass. This is where the magnets of the speaker goes, and these speakers barely fit. The way they're, they're designed, one side they have the, ter the speaker terminals, and on the other side they have the jumper harness spots for you to put make it 2 ohm or 4 ohm well that makes it not want to fit down in this square cut hole you have to have the sub sideways in order to fit in that hole so I almost made a big problem for myself but it corrected itself fairly easy so now all I have to do is take all this stuff, mount my amp under there, run the base knob up to the dash, and then my speaker wire, I just need to take the bottom of this pillar off, hopefully it's fairly easy, run my two speaker wires through here, up to here, back here, and then run it along the wall. Alright, before I move the seat forward and start mounting the amp, I'll show you where I put the uh, gain knob, base knob, gain knob. I mounted it here. And then ran the wire around the side between where all the tabs are. Ran it inside and ran it on this side where the bolt hole is. And then, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I have it zip tied to a bracket right here. And then come up right through here, through the side panel, and then have it routed. There's a push tab here, I have it pushed through here, pulled down here, and then there's another push tab here. I have it routed on the inside of this push tab. So on both of these push tabs, I have it routed on the inside of that. And then I just have it routed down through here along with my power wire and uh, RCA and stuff like that. And then up through here. Alright, thought I'd do a small update. Got the power and ground wires hooked to the amp. I somehow, in the last couple of weeks, lost my 4 gauge ferrules. So, as of right now, these don't have ferrules. Uh, I'm going to order some tonight so I can put some ferrules in here. My uh, remote wire does have a ferrule. It has one of these ferrules. I stripped the wire back and then used a ferrule crimp because the wire is small enough to use a crimp. So I used a crimp to crimp it. Uh, so it would go down. These bigger ferrules like I did on the fuse box or the fuse uh, link, you just stick it in there then tighten it down. Same way with these uh, four gauge wires or eight gauge wires. I'm just gonna stick them in here. Eight gauge is overkill, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Think, and I already have the ground wire ran right there. 
to that front seat bolt right here. I already got my spacers in the seat. Came with a bag of spacers. All you do, there's a bolt here, a bolt back here, a bolt there, and a bolt there. All 18 millimeter, you just take them all out, lift the seat up, and then you put these spacers underneath and tighten it down. With these spacers, the back of the seat won't go forward. Um, if I wanted to go forward, I'll probably have to get the bigger spacer uh, that some other sites sell, but it's good for right now. Got the speaker wire. I got a whole bunch of excess room, uh, wire so I can actually take the amp, pull it out, pull the amp out if I need to because I can't get to all these connections underneath the seat. So there's going to be a jumble of wire up under the seat, but that's going to be fine. I have the wires ran down through here, pulled this pillar off, which you just come up here, pull that pillar back. This piece right here, you just pull it back up and you have to really work back here because it actually goes behind this panel, the C pillar, but I didn't want to pull that one out, so I just kind of worked that out. Hopefully I can get it back in. And then it's got the speaker wire ran down through here, down through here, and have it ran into here, and I'll chop them short uh, when I plug them to the box, when I plug them into the box. One thing to note on speaker wire, you want it, you want the speaker wire to be, for both the speaker wires, to be the exact same length or very, very close to the, to the exact same length. Or you can have different, you know, just a little bit isn't going to hurt. But you can actually have a sub hitting before the other sub if there's, they're way off in uh, length. All right, I got my, I got all this set up temporarily. Got my uh, scope probing the outputs, and I already got my gain set where I need it, which is actually not very far up, which is it, it, fine. It's only, uh, it's flat, so it's all the way down, and it's flat is where I have it set. But the 40 hertz, 40 hertz test tone with my radio turned up to like 34. And it's not clipping, so that's where I'm going to keep it. So basically, don't go over 34. All right, I just I'm not going to worry with the subsonic filter because I'm in a sealed box. So subsonic is just all the way down. There's my low pass filter. What you do on the low pass filter is you turn it all the way up, and I decide I want to cut it off at 40 hertz. It seems like a rule of thumb might be 50, but I'm cutting it off at 30. Uh, I have 40 hertz. So besides playing a 50 hertz test tone like some people, I play a 40 hertz test tone. And then what you do, I'm not going to play it again, but it, you turn it all the way up. And then you look at your voltage and you slowly start turning it down. Until the voltage here on your multimeter starts going down. See, it was at like 61, 60 volts. I moved, I had this all the way up and I turned it down until I started watching that go to like 59 or something and I turned it right back up until it was about 50, 61 volts. And then that's a low pass filter set at 40 volts. All right, now I wanna set this up as one ohm on the amp. Well, these subs are both two ohm and four ohm. To set these up as two ohm, I gotta take out this jumper, which is the 4 ohm jumper from blue to orange, take it out, and then take out these two, uh, you know, hold downs, spacers. Now it looks like that. I take the two jumpers, two 2 ohm jumpers provided in a bag, and go from up here blue to gray and black to orange so blue to gray black to orange and now it's wired at 2 ohm then i can take 
the normal speaker wires and run these all the way back to the amp and the amp will do the parallel wiring for me because the amps is a single channel but it has two positive and two negative outputs so it parallels it at the amp if I had one input at the amp I would go from this sub go out join it at the other speaker terminal on the box and then jump it back to the amp or I would twist it together at the amp and then join it now my sub output is now two ohms and I could verify it with the multimeter if I wanted to over on the speaker wires on that side all right one week later that's gonna get on my nerves I'm gonna have to move that at some point but my OCD could wait one week later a trip to the hardware store to get some just standard one and a quarter inch exterior screws because I didn't have any wood screws at the house so these are bolted in my speaker cups I'll pop a picture on the screen those are bolted in I got the 8 gauge I have went from the amp all the way to the speaker cups and inside the speaker cups I just went 16 gauge speaker wire to the speakers I would have preferred 12 gauge um, even 14 gauge but the speaker wire that came with the wiring kit uh, was 16 gauge. I thought it was 12 gauge, but it, it'll, it'll, it'll do fine. Um, these speakers aren't going to use all of that wattage. Um, 8 gauge is really too much. But, and also, that sub, an RMA from Crutchfield, because that one decided to go out literally the first time I played it. Um, after I screwed the speaker, uh, the boxes down, it worked for like a minute. Made a rattling noise and stopped. And this is at extremely low volume, barely moving. So uh, Crutchfield got me an RMA on this one in two days. So I got to send that other one back on Monday or Tuesday. If they're open today, I need to call them to get me to send them the return slip. But I got all this up set up. And then a crucial thing, because it didn't sound right, I went ahead and redid all my EQs. My gain, my subsonic, my low pass filter. Um, I went to my wave tech and I just turned the turned it all the way down. Uh, turning my uh, the wave tech all the way down was like four to five volts. I don't remember which, but I had it turned up to like ten volts or something. So I turned it all the way down. And then I came over to my gain, played a forty hertz test tone until it started clipping. And that's where my gain ended up. Now, my low-pass filter, I set to 80 volts. Or 80 hertz. How you do that is you play a uh, 80 hertz test tone through your radio. And you turn the low-pass filter all the way up. Figure out what that voltage is. Cut it in half. Mine ended up being 50 volts, so I turned it down to where it was 20 volts. My subsonic filter was like almost 40-ish. I think it was like 38, somewhere around there. My subsonic filter, I set to 30 hertz. Even though it's a sealed box, I went ahead and set it anyway. Played a 30 hertz tone, cut it in half, 14 volts. So I turned it up just a smidge to 14, uh, 14 volts. So that's 14 volts. That's where my gain isn't clipping uh, 40, for, for 40 hertz. And that is my low pass filter set to 80. And it sounds much better. Uh, when I set my gain, put this directly in the center, then I set my gain. So now, if it's turned all the way down, little to no bass. Turn it to the middle, pretty darn loud. If there's a song that has a weak bass, then I can turn it up a little bit. So that's set amazing now. So... Yeah, everything's set up. Um, I can't really play anything due to copyright. I'll look around the YouTube library and find some random something or another.
is now. And uh, that's it. Like I said, I need these to break in before I do a bunch of anything with it. Um, and also get a feel to, to how loud I can actually play it, you know, without blowing them. Because um, these are, even, even playing that, pretty sure there's more in them. Because they're, they're, they're flexing pretty good, but they're not flexing, you know, a lot. But uh, at the same time, the you know this box is kind of small uh, for these subs. These subs, I think, need a minimum of 0.95 cubic foot uh, in a in a sealed box. You know, a minimum of 0.95, and this box is 0.75. So they're not gonna play to their full full potential uh, as if the box was bigger. Or if the box was ported. If the box was ported, uh, this box size is plenty for it. Um, but I didn't feel like getting a Fox box. Uh, my Fox box was about $100 more than what I paid for this one. But I got this one specifically so I could put stuff behind the sub box. There's a gap behind the sub box where I can put, like, that's a lug wrench and stuff with adapters so I can get my uh, aftermarket wheels and lug nuts off. Um, I got some jumper cables back there. I just got a bunch of stuff uh, stuffed back there, you know, that, that I would like to keep in the truck. Um, because now that I don't have an underseat storage spot, I need somewhere to put that stuff. If I would have got the Fox box, the Fox box goes pretty much all the way to the back wall. Not all the way to the back wall, but it's a lot bigger than this box, and I wouldn't be able to put anything behind the box. Da -da -da -da. Talk to you all later. Bye.